An all-new Pontiac Firebird, introduced in 1970, represented a new high for Pontiac styling. The front bumper and grille were molded out of Endura rubber, and were painted the same color as the car, to give it a bumperless appearance. The suspension was revised, with a rear stabilizer bar added. At the top was the Trans Am, fitted with air dams across the bottom of the front and in front of the wheels. A large decklid spoiler and small spoilers in front of the rear wheels completed the package. Trans Ams also received a rear-facing shaker hood scoop. Optional on the Trans Am was the Ram Air 4 engine, whose output had increased to 370 brake horsepower due to bigger ports, better heads, swirl-polished valves, and an aluminum intake manifold. A 4-speed Hurst shifter was standard, but a 3-speed turbo hydromatic automatic was available. Inside, the instrumentation included a tachometer to complete the performance image. The Trans Am was available in either polar white or lucent blue, with contrasting stripes, a modest bird stencil at the tip of the nose, and the words, Trans Am, across the rear spoiler. This Revell kit, part number 854489 is a 1 scale level 4 kit. Let's start by laying out and prepping the parts for assembly. After washing all the parts, I used my X-Acto knife blade in reverse to scribe all the panel lines. Lightly score the lines for best results. I had to clean up the front nose piece and test the alignment to the body. Once satisfied with the fit, I used Mr. Hobby's liquid cement to permanently attach it. It lined up perfectly. Next to check was how the hood fit. It was warped and needed to be trimmed. I used sanding sticks and hot tap water to bring it back to shape. It fits much better now. I trimmed and attached the rear taillight panel with the liquid cement. I applied it to both inner and outer surfaces for a secure fit. Attaching this now will not interfere with installing the chassis. I used the cement to attach the rear spoiler to the trunk lid. As with all the other parts, I had to trim to get an exact fit. This sits at the very edge of the trunk, slightly overlapping the taillight panel. Attaching these parts now will make it so I don't have to glue them after painting. Yeah. Using 1000 grit sandpaper, I roughened the surface to obtain better adhesion of the Tamiya Light Gray Fine Surface Primer. I applied two coats a half hour apart, and allowed it to dry for 24 hours. This will provide a nice base for the top coat I will apply later. I also primed the rest of the parts to be assembled to prep them for painting. After priming the body and allowing it to cure, you want to wet sand it. It takes the roughness out of the primer. I'm using 2000 grit. All I want to do is just to get the roughness of the primer and promote better adhesion of the top coat. Just a little light pressure allow the paper to do the work go over the area very lightly you'll hear it kind of grind it first and then you'll hear it smooth out try to stay away from any style lines so you don't burn through the primer and then once finished with the area you can dry it off and check your progress. There, nice and smooth. After wet sanding, I applied several coats of Tamiya TS-19 Metallic Blue. I will let this cure for several days before performing more body detailing. I always obtain good results with Tamiya sprays. Excellent coverage and sheen. I started assembly of the 400 cubic inch Ram Air 4 engine. I sanded the joint line on the oil pan to make it look like one piece. Using a pin vise, I pre-drilled the holes for the spark plug wires and distributor. I used a custom mix of Vallejo paints for the Pontiac engine color. Adding the valve covers, carburetor, and detailed pulley system completes the engine assembly. Here's the completed Pontiac motor. 
I wired the engine using Gopher Racing's pre-wired distributor that included the boots that I purchased from Bad L Hobbies here locally in Middleburg Heights. Using the pre-wired distributor made wiring this engine considerably easier. The kit comes with, of course, the distributor and wires, as well as the boots for the spark plugs. Basically, you just drill holes in the engines for the spark plug boots and distributor, plant your distributor, set, measure your wires and cut them to length, insert them into the boots, and then glue everything down, and it turns out just fine. Very realistic looking. I assembled the two rear suspension components. Then I installed the shock absorbers. I test fit the rear suspension onto the chassis before painting them. First, line up the shock absorber pins with the holes and press them in. They should sit flush. Then, press the rear leaf spring shackles in place. The shock absorber rods should protrude through the chassis. A good fit. Test fitting ensures a good foundation for the build. The detail parts hand painted, ready to install. The chassis was painted the body color, and frame rails are gloss black. The gas tank was painted steel with black hold down straps. I scraped the contact points for the front and rear suspensions to ensure good adhesion of the parts. The rear suspension went in no problem due to the earlier test fit. Alright, putting the tires together, there are four components. Obviously the tire, the rim, which we have cut loose from the sprue and cleaned off the chrome on the back. You have your wheel backing plate and then the uh, insert to install it onto the axle. So we test fit the rim into the wheel. And that looks pretty good. Now we'll flip it over, apply some glue to the edge, and apply it onto the back of the rim where we trimmed the chrome off. We'll take this piece. We don't glue this. We insert this into the backing little snug fit, but it'll go just like so. And then we take and join the two pieces together. And there you have it. Now the wheels press fit onto the axles. You do not need to glue them unless you don't want the wheels to roll. I use Micropore tape along with a sharp blade, masking tape, and Vallejo black paint to simulate carpeting. I painted the interior tub, applied the tape, trimmed to fit, masked off the interior, and painted the tape black. I installed the seats and seat belt decals. I detailed the dash and added the steering wheel. The dashboard fits nicely, and completes the interior. The Tamiya Desert Tan makes an excellent interior color. Using warm water and decal setting solutions, I started applying the decals. First I applied the striping, then the Firebird logo to the front, and the Trans Am and Pontiac badging to the rear. Decal solutions set them in place. Passenger side marker light and Trans Am badging decals placed, as well as the door handle and lock, and the rear marker light. Passenger side complete. The same installation procedure was followed for the driver side as well. Here is the completed driver side. The decal installation completed, and ready for clear coat. I used a Moltov chrome pen to highlight the front, side, and rear window trim. I relined the paint booth to keep a clean environment, then applied three coats of Tamiya TS-13 gloss clear to give a nice shine and seal the decals. The shine is incredible. I used canopy glue to secure the front and rear windows. One team garage suggested using polish on the windows before installation to avoid fingerprints. 
a solid idea. Using Vallejo paints as well as decals, I was able to achieve a nice underhood detail. If you look at step 12, it says to line up the locator pins on the bottom of the interior with the slots in the chassis. Now, as you can see, there are slots in the chassis, but there are no locator pins on the interior. The interior fits onto two pins behind the rear window. I used a combination of Super Gold Plus and Canopy Glue to secure it. I scraped the contact points under the engine compartment and installed the chassis. Doing this step ensured a good bond between the chassis and the body. I used Super Gold Plus and held it in place till it bonded firmly. Once that set, I placed the radiator, radiator hose, and shaker scoop in the engine compartment. I had to trim the bottom edges of the radiator for a proper fit. The detailed grille completes the front end. The underhood insulating panels were colored in. Bare metal foil was used for the tail light trim. After the tail lights were pressed in, I put the license plate on, along with the rear bumper. Putting this bumper on straight proved to be a challenge. Megwire's polishes were used to enhance the shine and add protection. The compound removes minor imperfections, and the wax seals the surface and provides a nice shine. The 1970 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am is now complete. The garage guys, Mike, Dave, and Tony give the car a once-over and prepare it for its journey.